Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm an independent contractor and trainer. Now in this episode we're going to pick up where we last left off in our embedded C++ work but we are going to see if we can now actually make some gains in our code by using C++ instead of using C. So what we last left off with was this code that had a standard array that was some pointers to vectors, that is pointers to interrupt handling vectors, and then we had our vector that we set up in our main which used port 1 to say when an event happened on port 1 we want to clear the interrupt and we want to toggle pin 6, which made the light flash. And then we have in our interrupt vector routine here that's registered with the compiler, it's a special type of function, we are checking to see if our vector is set and then we are calling it. Now this code has a few problems. The first is that we are doing this null pointer check on each loop iteration into this um, vector handler, that is, and that requires us to do a test against zero here, compare to R0, uh, R12 to the value zero, and if we succeed in R0, then we call the routine that is at, uh, in register 12, and that ends up being our lambda. And this is as we can see, we currently are compiling with dash 03, and we have a hundred lines of assembly here. Some of it is labels, and some of it is comments, but that's all right. So what we want to do is try to reduce the size of this program and do something more intelligent. And the first thing that I would like to point out is that we are very unlikely to swap out our vector routines at runtime. Now I guess there could be reasons why you'd want to do this, but it just seems unlikely to me. But what we I think really want to accomplish is giving ourselves a high-level interface onto the MSP430 chip in some way that works with modern C++ and maybe is a little bit less dynamic so that we can get a little bit smaller code and better performance considering the nature of this chip with only 2k of flash and 128 bytes of RAM. So to accomplish this I am going to start by making a uh, struct that represents the MSP430. It's going to be very simple, but it is going to do what we need to do for the sake of this example, and we will build on it in future episodes. Now I am going to be using a combination of templates and const expert programming here. So I would say in general, make every function that you can const expert. This is a good thing and it helps the compiler optimize the code, but more importantly, it helps you do more things at compile time. And that's something that I will get into in just a moment. But what we have here is in our constructor, we want to pass in the set of interrupt handlers that we want to actually be using on our chip. And we're going to do that with a variadic template for our MSP430 struct. And this would all be much better in C17, but we don't have C17 fully available to us yet. So we're going to have to do what we can with our C14, which is going to mean making a couple of make. Um, helpers, but it'll all work out cleanly, I promise. Now the first problem is yet we have not defined what our interrupt handler is, and we're going to do that with a simple template alias, which is a handy thing from C++ um, 11. So this is just simply saying that an interrupt handler of type T is a pair of our interrupt and our uh, 
callable objects that we're passing in. And we're going to make this a strongly typed enum class here. And now we have the problem that we have not yet defined our indexes and victors members, and we'll do that now. So we know that our interrupt handler is a pair. The left, or the first part of the pair, is the interrupt um, enum value, and the second is the callable thing that we want to be able to execute. So we're creating a tuple of our vectors of callables, and we are creating an array that is our enum class interrupts, and this is giving us an index so that we know that the zeroth element of indexes is the type of vector for our interrupt service routine that is going to be our zeroth element of the tuple. So now that we have our const expr constructor in place and we are fleshing this out, we need one more helper function for the sake of this example. And basically, we just need to know some way of mapping an interrupt name to an index in our tuple. So this code, which is a const expr function also, is going to return the index of the interrupt requested, or if that doesn't exist, it's just going to return max of size t. So this will just return an invalid value. And the way we're going to use this is actually going to result in a compile time error, not a runtime error, because having a runtime error here would be completely useless. And we need to make sure that we include our numeric limits header and our tuple header and we need to correct the spelling of limits. Okay, so we have the helper class that we would want that gives us kind of a handy look at what we're doing with our MSP430. It is extremely simple at this point and can only handle interrupt vector registration, but we will again, get there in just a moment. Now to actually use this, because it is a templated type, it's going to be really handy to have a couple of make maker functions, like we have make tuple and make pair in C++11, and unfortunately, um, like I said, this would be much better in C++17, they wouldn't be necessary, but we can't do that just yet. Maybe hopefully in a update to the compiler later we'll be able to. So we have now done everything that we want to do, and we have our vectors code here that is no longer useful because we want to register this when we create our MSP430 object. So let's go ahead and create our MSP430 object, and we can see what that looks like. So now we're creating our MSP430 object. We are passing it one interrupt handler that is for port one, and it is the same routine that we were executing before. Now our code still doesn't compile because we need to deal with this here. Now, the whole reason I've gone about doing it like I have is because GCC will not properly create the interrupt vector if we make this a static method of the MSP430 class. So we're having to do it as a free function here, 
we now are going to use our global variable that we created, which is called MSP430, and it is a const expert function. And this has very significant meaning for us. That means that our get index function, which is defined const expert, now becomes a compile time value. So we can make a combination use of const expert and templates by doing something like this. Now this code still has a little bit more cleaning up that it can do, but what we have been able to do is pass to this template function a call to a function, to a, a member function called get index and pass in which port we want to get the index of. And because this is all const expert and this is all known at compile time, the compiler is able to perfectly inline our interrupt handler that we registered when we called our make msp430 function here. So our final resulting compiled code is only 55 statements. That makes it approximately half the size of the previous one. Now granted, a few of them are because the header for the lambda function no longer needs to be here because it was compiled away. So that removed, um, say, nine statements on its own, but it still works out to a pretty darn good savings because of the inlining that we get. So we have, again, we've reduced our code by about a half, maybe a little less than a half. And we have eliminated the need to call another function and the need to do a runtime check to see if the vector has been set. And we can do that all by taking advantage of constexpr. So one more quick comment. I mentioned that this is actually a compile time check. So if I said I wanted to do the interrupt of port 2, the compiler is going to execute this um, const expert git index at compile time. It's going to fail to find something with the name port 2, and it is going to then return our numeric limits of max and then when we try to look up into vectors, something of that value max, it's going to simply fail at compile time because there's nothing with that index in our tuple. So that is good. It gives us the compile time safety that we want and the runtime performance that we want. And we can put that back in and it, it continues to work as we expected. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.